our first hymn this morning, when everybody is available. Uh, it's going to be number 127 in your hymnal, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Please remain standing. Scripture readings from uh, Psalms, Psalms 85. I invite you to turn with us if you'd like to. Psalms 85. That is page. Page 543 in your Pew Bible, if you'd like to turn along with us. Begin reading with the eighth verse, I'm reading down. Let me hear what the God what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
We want to continue to remember uh, Charles Sanders. I hope he's doing better. And uh, also, uh, we'll lift up Gerald Martin, who had his surgery, did have a valve replacement, also had to have a pacemaker put in. Uh, talked to Sharon this, after the surgery. I did go up and be with him during the surgery, and after the surgery, uh, he's, uh, he was not able to talk, and he was still knocked out from the surgery. But anyway, got to see him, and she said he is slowly recovering from the anesthesia. It takes a while to get back oriented from that, but he did have successful surgery. So hopefully today or tomorrow they'll be coming home. I haven't heard from them today, so wait to see. Keep Gerald in prayer. And also Lawrence Douglas, we continue to lift him in our prayers. And all the others that we have on our prayer list here today, we lift those up. Anyone else? Tammy did get a report from her um, test and from her visit with the doctor. We did see a new doctor in the office, and they did find that they were giving Tammy the same medicine twice instead of once, and so it messed up her thyroid, so she's going to be three or six weeks recovered from that. So Tammy is better, but we're thankful. One, we got to see somebody with a new set of eyes and caught it, and another, uh, you know, you're frustrated it happened, but we're thankful that it didn't happen, uh, didn't get caught and took care of it. So it does happen. People make mistakes. We just thank God for the solutions. Anyone else? We celebrated my 39th wedding anniversary. It's a long time to put up with me. Amen. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't mean to say that so crazy. But congratulations. Deborah. My son Ian got his um, student teaching in Lewisburg. So awesome. Thank you for the prayers for that. All those prayers have been praying for her son to get that job. He got it over student teaching. So that's great. Anyone else? devastated that place and loss of life and property and just everything. So pray for them. Anyone else? Reminder that if remember I said this the office will be closed tomorrow. The good and the bad is we're getting our boy moved into college, back into college. Going to Cookville, is that right? Across Cookville. And so remember Michelle she has that joyous occasion of having somebody move in. It's always great. But not John, we're celebrating his birthday, 85. So congratulations on that. And Larry, if you see Larry, he had a birthday last week. I got one coming up, big six old, I'll be almost as old as Scott. <laughs> It's not really a big six so, old. You know, you used to think 60 was a lot. It's not. I don't feel like it. It's just a number. Anyone else? We thank God for the rain. Even though we, we had some heat, we got some rain, and, and the grass is growing, all the yard mowers are happy. So it's always good if you look for things, even in the situations. So let's all pray together. God, we do thank you for letting us be in this house today. It is a place of worship and thanksgiving. We do thank you, dear God, for the many celebrations, whether it be anniversaries or birthdays. God, we are so thankful. We're thankful for success and surgeries. And we also pray for those, Lord, who have been misfortunate and have not had a good success and have had troubles in their life. We pray, Lord, for them that they might find peace and they might find comfort, Lord, in whatever you may give them. God, we pray for those in Hawaii, uh, Lord, in the little community of, of Maui. We pray, dear God, that you just be with that island community. God, just so much devastation. And we pray for this family who lost their house. Lord, may we be an instrument of faith to help them, Lord, as they rebuild and as they bring their lives back together. We thank you for their safety, but Lord, we also know the hurt they must be going through. 
And God, as we go through these prayers and times of reflection, we pray, Lord, now that you'd help us remember who we serve. And, and Lord, the prayer that you taught us to pray, we now join together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our second hymn this morning is going to be number 380 in your hymnal. There's within my heart a melody. Please stand in faith. I saw a groundhog the other day. 
What number did I tell you? Three. Okay. I was going, I was going to uh, outside, and I saw that groundhog outside, and I saw him. He was sitting out there and had a big time, and then, then he went to run away. So I took his picture though before I did. And I went to town last week, and I got to go to Harbor Freight. What number did I tell you? Okay. Well, y'all really focused this morning. Your mommy likes Hobby Lobby? Mimi? Mimi likes Hobby Lobby? I like Hobby Lobby too. Okay, what I did this morning was I tried to tell you other stories and things that are happening. And I want to say, make sure you remember. Y'all know my middle name? What is it? Douglas. No, it's a middle name. It's three. No, it's not. No, it's not three. My middle name is Lewis. Lewis. Lucas, not the same. Okay, so did y'all remember number three? You did? How about you? What's the number? What's the number? Three. Sometimes, sometimes in the world, we try to keep our eyes focused on Jesus. But what happens is, y'all listen, sometimes we try to keep our eyes focused on Jesus. And what happens is, is we get distracted by other stories. We get distracted by telling each other stuff. We get distracted. And so what I want you to do today is, is keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus in your life. And then when things happen, you won't be distracted. You'll say, I'm just focusing on Jesus. Focusing on Jesus. So what was that number again? All right, let's pray. God, thank you so much for loving us in this way that we can keep our eyes on you and know, Lord, that our, our lives will be focused on you and we'll live a life more fuller because we have Jesus in our lives. Lord, let not the distraction of this world take away from what we're doing for you. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, I've got some bags for you. This young lady here, we'll get those for you. Thank you. What's the number? Three. Let's check. If you go to the doctor's office now, they'll give you like four or five questions when you get to the geriatric doctor. That's like, yeah, that's true. We'll ask the ushers to come down and see what more now. God, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for all the blessings you give us. And Lord, as we pause this morning to give back, we thank you, dear God, for the gifts, the many gifts that you give us. And we give this portion, Lord, for your glory, for your kingdom, and for your work. Bless the gift and the giver in the name of Jesus.
Chad, do you want to come up here? Tap has been asking the same with me for a few weeks. And I kind of put her off and I apologize for that because I didn't know, you know if I could sing with her or not. She's kind of above a level than I am, so I was trying to. But let me see if I can get us going here. Just a minute, Tap. We keep our eyes focused on Jesus and we know we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to worry because God is always there watching us. So I'm going to try to sing a song as eyes on the sparrow. She's going to sing the chorus with me. So just pray for me as I try to do this. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? But why should my heart feel lonely? Long for heaven's home when Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he, for his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me, for his eye. And I know he watches me. <clears throat> I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For I know his eyes on me. His eyes on me. I sing because. Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 through 33. Immediately he made disciples get in the boat and go ahead on the other side. While he dismissed the crowds, and after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to a mountain by himself to pray. And when evening was come, he was there alone. About this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. They cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Then Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. 
He cried out and said, Lord, save me. Jesus re immediately reached out his hand and called him, saying to him, You have little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Some would say maybe this is just an exaggerated story of thinking about somebody walking on the water, but Jesus was able to do all kinds of miracles and all kinds of things, and I, I take them at his word. And I've never really saw anyone walk on the water, but I still believe. Matter of fact, I had an experience in my life one time where I almost walked on water. I know that's hard to believe. When I tell you the story, maybe you'll understand how many ever saw the movie or movie Jaws? Anybody? You remember the music they would play before the song? And you remember how that, you know, you anticipated, Spielberg had this way of, of making you feel like anticipating what was going to happen. And when it happened, you were, you were scared. Well, you know, I watched that movie not long ago. It's not as scary as it used to be. Maybe I've grown up a little bit. But... After I had watched that movie, and after I had seen Jaws several times, I had almost nightmares about that movie when I get in the water. And so the first time I'd been to the ocean as a kid, I remember going there, and it was right after we watched Jaws. Now you can imagine the imagination I had in my mind about this big creature coming up and swallowing me, but I wanted to get in the ocean. So I got out in the ocean, and I was in there just for a moment, and all of a sudden something bumped my leg. I almost walked on water. <laughs> That's the closest I've come to walking on water because I'm going to tell you, I was the fastest I ever got out of the water. And I was so fast, I believe I almost walked on water. Now imagine, though, Jesus, who had been teaching and also had fed the 5,000 and all the things that had happened, now taking himself up to a place to pray, which I think Jesus sets a good example for us. We need to take that time apart and pray and recoup and re rewind our minds around what we're doing. And so it's important for all of us. But he sent the disciples on the cross in a boat. But in that boat, the waters, the waves began to roar and began to, the wind began to push against them and began to cause them trouble. And then they see Jesus begin to walk on the water toward them. Not only are they dealing with the wind and the waves, but also now they see, looks like to them, a ghost, because they've never seen anything like this, coming to them across the water. It said that they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. I've never really seen a ghost, but I think if I did, I would be afraid. I hope it's a good ghost. I hope it's a ghost that wouldn't harm me, because we don't know. It's a thing we're unaware about. Now, some say there's a ghost here in the church. I have not seen this ghost that y'all talk about. I've heard noises, but you know, I've heard noises in all kinds of places. And... <laughs> You know, if I do see a ghost, y'all will be the first to know. I promise. I will share that experience. But there is that one. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Jesus. I believe that, the Spirit of Christ. And I believe the Holy Spirit is with us today. And it will not harm us, but it will help us. But anyway, they were terrified. And they were saying, they cried out in fear. But immediately what happens is, is Jesus speaks to them. He stops their fears and he says, take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. It's amazing how that even in this situation where the disciples had been with Jesus and saw all the miraculous things that he had done, that they still were afraid of a little ghost. The presence of a ghost. Or maybe thought they saw a ghost. I would have been saying, how is he walking on the water? That would be maybe my question. But they thought they saw a ghost and they were afraid. 
The mind can play tricky things on you, and sometimes we see things, we're not sure what it is, we can't identify it, we can't really put a label on it, so we become afraid. But Peter spoke up after he realized it was Jesus, and he said, Lord, if it is really you, command me to come on the water, and then immediately Jesus says, come on, Peter, come to me out of the boat. So Peter starts walking on the water. And notice what happens. Peter keeps his eyes focused on Jesus, and as long as he does, he stays above water. But as he's walking, he begins to notice the turbulence under him. He begins to see the waves as they were churning, and he starts to sink. And he cries out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reaches out his hand and catches him and says, Oh, you have little faith, why did you doubt? There's a few things that happened in that passage. One is, Jesus, Jesus, Peter took his eyes off Jesus. And when we take our eyes off Jesus, we begin to see the turmoil around us. We begin to see the trouble. We begin to see the things that cause us to fear. I was trying to get the kids, I didn't really have a lot of time to do with them, but I, I could probably do a better experiment where I gave them something to remember, and if they forgot, took their mind off of it, they would forget. But these kids were sharp. They remembered the three every time. When I first moved here, I was looking for a, a doctor because I was two and a half hours away from my doctor. And, and I was looking and Vanderbilt decided to sign me one through my weight loss place. They wanted to sign me a geriatric doctor. I said, I am not geriatric, but I am. But that, it's just something about that word geriatric. It meant I was getting older and I really didn't want to do that. And one of the things the doctor will ask you is, is I need you to remember three things. One is, uh, it's 12 o'clock. Or another thing, uh, what is uh, color blue? And another may be uh, the word uh, uh, bird. You know, I mean, it's just three words. And then after they talk to you about everything else, they said, all right, tell us what, what you said. I mean, what I told you. And so I give them back that. And my mother has to do that. Makes me feel really good when my mom and I have both the same kind of doctors. But anyway, they, we got this the thing you have to remember. My mother always bragged about it. She said, I remembered all three things. She said, I had to stay focused, but I remember. And says, so that, does that mean I'm sane? I said, no, it doesn't mean you're sane. It just means you remember three things. <laughs> but staying focused, we're able to remember what our job is, what our task is. And our task today is, is to follow Jesus and to keep our eyes focused on him. Like Peter did, he was able to do a miraculous thing. He was able to walk on the water and move toward Christ. And when we keep our eyes focused on what the important thing is, that's to follow him, to love God and love neighbor and love ourselves, we begin to do miraculous things, things that change the world we live in, things that change the people we encounter with when we focus on what you're supposed to do. When you drive a car, they tell you to make sure you don't have distracted driving. All it takes is a second. I'm as guilty as anybody else to take your eye off the road. And you can end up hitting somebody or being in the ditch. My wife says hallelujah, amen. But all it takes is just that little moment to take your eyes off what you're supposed to be doing. You imagine somebody who's a, a concert pianist who has the gift, maybe like Elaine has. I mean, all these, these wonderful musicians and Karen and Alan, everyone that plays and do so wonderful. Imagine if they're playing and all of a sudden they take something takes a distraction, uh, takes their focus off their playing. You hear that music note change. They have to stay focused. Someone's playing in a sporting event and they, it's the last minute of the game and they have to shoot a free throw and they have to be focused on the way they shoot that free throw to make sure they win. <laughs> person standing at the ball, at the baseball playing a baseball plate or the softball, you have to keep your eye on the ball. 
as a pitcher, I've played with a lot of younger guys that hit the ball back at me sometimes, and if I don't stay focused, they'll take my head off. I mean, they hit it back at me really hard, and if I'm not ready, then I'm going to take the blunt of it. Have to stay focused. No different in our relationship with God. We have to stay focused. We have to realize that Jesus is with us and keep our eyes on Him and focus instead of worrying about all the other things that distract us. I try to tell the kids all kinds of different stories to take them away from their focus. And that's what the world does. It tries to keep us distracted from what is important. And what happens sometimes is it hits us in our finances. Sometimes it hits us in our family. Sometimes it hits us with our health. All those things distract us like Peter was distracted. And we just need to remember, he says, be not afraid. It is I. I am with you. The second thing that happened in that passage was he reminded them that they were not alone. He reminded Peter that he was not alone. And just like a, about a month ago when Tammy and I and Tapta stopped at this lady to help this lady who had been hit in a car accident, one of the things I tried to instill in her and remind her is that she was not alone and that she was okay. She was almost in shock because of what she'd just been through. But as I began to remind her, we're with you. You're okay. It's all right. How many times have you had to do that to your children? Whenever they were going through a hard time, you had to remind them, it's okay. You're all right. You still got all your arms and legs and fingers. You're okay. They, they fall down and skin themselves up and they begin to cry. And you have to reassure them, you're okay. God does that through his son, Jesus Christ. Just as Peter was walking in the water, he said to him as he began to sink, it's okay. I am with you. And God reaches out to us as Christ did to Peter. It's amazing what we can accomplish. We keep our eyes on Jesus. You remember when you first rode a bike? You remember when you had those training wheels? I'm not sure we had training wheels. I think our parents just, to learn how to swim, they just threw us in the pond. You know? It's like John Wayne, or was it John Wayne asked that kid one time in that movie, it said, uh, said, can you swim? And he said, no. He said, you can now. And you just threw him out in the water. Sometimes that's the way our parents did us. Now we don't do that the way our kids. We put training wheels on them again to, to teach them how to ride. And after we take the training wheels off, they're saying, I can't ride without the training wheels. And after a while, we hold the seat and we let go of the seat. Before they know it, they start to, to ride that bicycle everywhere. And before you know it, you can't catch them. They're gone. Jesus is... They're holding us, letting us, leading us. And now he's in front of us saying, come and follow me. But we can't take our eyes off Jesus. We've got to study his word. We've got to pray. We've got to find times of prayer that we renew ourselves. And keep our eyes on the prize. When we do that, we like Peter can even walk on water. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for all the things you do in our life because we have focused on you. God, forgive us when we take our eyes off the one who leads us through darkness, who leads us beyond the cross, leads us beyond death. Forgive us when we become afraid for our flesh is weak. But God, help us focus on the one on the cross who gave his life for us. And as we focus on you, Lord, we, like Peter, can begin to walk on the water in our lives. To overcome the barriers and the turbulence and the waves that are beneath us. And focus our eyes on the things that you have given us. And Lord, as we succeed, we praise you and we honor you. So if there's one here today, Lord, that has found himself in a place where they begin to sink. I pray, Lord, you put our eyes back on you as you reach your arms out to us and lift us up. And we'll give you all praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning, hymn number 156, I Love to Tell the Story. We will sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Please stand in faith. <laughs>
just kind of put out there. Uh, Maybe be a possibility of some baptisms coming up. And if you have not been baptized, and you'd like to be baptized, we're going to do maybe an old-fashioned baptism at the river. So if you'd like to be part of that, or any, way, any mode of baptism you'd like, we can still do, but if you'd like to be part of that, have not been baptized, let me know, and that when it comes up, we will have you on the list to do that. Um, it's going to be a great time. I can't tell you in details yet, but it's a possibility. All hearts and minds clear. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the beautiful music, as always. We are so blessed to have our musicians. Scott, you do all right, too. And thank you, Don, for all you do. And Denise, thank you for our Sunday school. Our Sunday school is very important. I can't say that enough. If you can be part of the Sunday school, we will certainly welcome you to do that. We did have some visitors this morning, and we hope that we invite them back. So make sure you welcome all of our visitors and friends today. All hearts and minds clear. Eyes on Jesus. Focus on Him. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we now leave this place with great thanksgiving. All you've blessed us with, Lord, is more than we ever could imagine. Lord, let us keep our eyes on you. And may, Lord, we feel blessed that we've been in your presence. In the name of Christ, we pray and all God's people say it. Amen.